it'd be funny if there's a freedom of speech switch that you could yeah. also control <laughs> and it would be a perfect metaphor well that's different state of because things. what they figured out is is that if they can just make sure that we don't have uh any public options for communication then hey every every, pri every uh thing that we say to each other goes through a private company private companies can do whatever they want and this is like one of the greatest moves that we didn't really notice uh electronic and digital speech makes every other kind of speech irrelevant and because there is no public option, uh, guess what? There's always somebody named Sundar or Jack or Mark who controls whether or not you can speak and what it appears to be that is being said and who whose stuff is weighted more highly than other. It's an absolute nightmare. And by the way, the Silicon Valley intellectual elite, Lord knows what is going on. People are so busy making money that they are not actually upholding any of the values so Silicon Valley is sort of maximally against it. It has this kind of libertarian, uh, free, progressive sheen to it when it goes to Burning Man. And then it quickly just imposes rules on all of the rest of us as to what we can say to each other if we're not part of the inner elite. So what do you think the ideal of the freedom of speech means? Well, this is very interesting. I keep getting lectured on social media by people who have no idea how much power the Supreme Court has to abstract things. Mm -hmm. Right now, you have a concept of the letter of the law and the spirit of the law. And the spirit of the law would have to say that our speech that matters is free, at least at the level of ideas. I don't claim that I have the right to endanger your life with speech or to reveal your private information. So I really am not opining about directed speech intended to smear you. And that that's a different kettle of fish. And maybe I have some rights to do that, but I don't think that they're infinite. Um, what I am saying is, is that the sp freedom of speech for ideas is essential that the court abstract it and shove it down the throat of Google, Facebook, Twitter, Amazon, whoever these infrastructure companies are, because it really matters which abstraction you use. The, the, the case that I really like is search and seizure. If I have private data that I entered in my house that is stored on a server that you hold outside of my house, mm -hmm. um, but I view the, is the abstraction that it's only the perimeter of my house that I have the right to protect, or does my password extend the perimeter of my house to the data on the server that is located outside of my house? Mm -hmm. These are court, are choices for the court, and the court is supposed to pretend that they can divine the true intent of the framers. But all of the sort of, and I, I've taken to calling this the problem of internet hyenas, people with ready-made answers and LOLs and you're such a moron. These folks love to remind you, it's a private company, dude, it can do whatever it wants. Mm -hmm. No, the court has to figure out what the abstractions are. And just the way, for example, the Griswold decision, um, found that there was a penumbra because there was too little in the constitution. Therefore, there were all sorts of things implied that couldn't be in the document. Somebody needs to come up with the abstraction right now that says, uh, Jack cannot do whatever he wants. It's really, so you say the courts, but it's also us, uh, people who think about the world, it's no, you. No, no, it's the courts. But if the courts don't do this, mm -hmm. we're toast. But we can still think about it. I mean, I'll-, I'll Sure, I'll, but I, I don't feel like going down the drain. Here's what I'm thinking about, because it's tricky how far it should extend. I mean, that's an ongoing conversation. Don't you think the interpretation of the law- I think I'm trying to say something very simple, mm -hmm. and it's just not gonna be popular for a while. Tech dwarfs previous forms of communication. Print or shouting in a public park, and so, you know, I, I can go to a public park and I can shout if I get a permit. Even there, I think it was in the ninth, late 1980s in Atlanta, we came up with free speech zones where you can't protest at a convention, but you can go to a park 23 miles out and they'll, they'll fence off a little area where you can have your free speech. Yeah. Um, no, speech is dangerous. Ideas are dangerous. We are a country about danger and risk. And yes, I agree that targeted speech at individuals trying to reveal their private stuff and all that kind of, that, that is very different. So forget a lot of that stuff. But free speech for ideas is meant to be dangerous. And people will die as a result of free speech. 
The idea that one life is too much is preposterous. Like, why did we send, if one life is preposterous, why did we send anyone to the beaches of Normandy? I just don't get this. So one thing that I was clearly bothered by, and maybe you could be my therapist as well. <laughs> I thought you were mine. <laughs> this is this is a little bit of a miscommunication on both of our parts then. Uh, because who's paying who for this? <laughs> I was really bothered by uh, Amazon banning Parler from AWS because my assumption was that the infrastructure, I drew a distinction between AWS, the infrastructure on which competing platforms could be created is different than the actual platforms. So I, I, the standard of the ideal of freedom of speech, I, in my mind, in a shallow way perhaps, applied differently to AWS than I did to Twitter. It felt that we've created a more dangerous world, that freedoms were violated by banning uh, Parler from AWS, which I saw as the computing infrastructure which enables the competition of tools, the competition of frameworks of communication. What do you think about this? First level? of all, let me give you the, the uh, internet hyena answer. I don't understand, dude. Mm -hmm. Just build your own Amazon. Yeah. Right? Yes. Well, so that's a very shallow statement, but it's also one that has some legitimacy. We can't completely dismiss it because uh, there's levels to this to this game. Yes and no, but if we, if yeah. you really wanted to chase that down, yeah, one of the great things about a person-to-person -person conversation as opposed to like, let's have 30 of our closest friends. Whenever we have a conversation with 30 of our closest friends, you know what happens? It's like passing light through a prism. Every person says something interesting. And as a result, it's always muddled. You, like nothing ever resolves. Well, one of my conversational techniques you mentioned, uh, you push back is, uh, uh, first is childlike naivety and curiosity, but also- Real I, or simulated? Real, I'm afraid. I would say 80% real. Yeah. All right, so in this paradigm, yeah. how could you not see this coming? I mean, this, I did a show with um, Ashley Matthews, who's the woman behind Riley Reed, and specifically about this. It was about the idea that if I move away from politics and go towards sex, uh, I know that there's always a move to use the infrastructure to shut down um, sex workers. And in this case, uh, we had Operation Choke Point under the Obama uh, administration. We have a positive passion for people who want to solve problems that they, they don't like this company, they don't like that company, payday loans would be another one. And so you have legal companies that are harassed by our financial system that her you can't, you know, uh, as Riley Reed, uh, Ashley couldn't get a MailChimp account, according to her, if I understand her correctly. And this idea that you charge these people higher rates because of supposed uh, chargebacks on credit cards, even if their chargebacks are low. Yes, we have an unofficial policy of harassment. There's something about everybody who shows up at Davos uh, they get drunk in the Swiss Alps and then they come back home and they coordinate and they coordinate things like build back better. We don't really understand what build back better is, but my guess is, is that build back better has to do with extremism in America. How do we shut down the Republican party as the source of extremism? Now, I do think the Republican party was got very extreme under Trump. And I do believe that that was responsive to how extreme the democratic party, uh, got under Clinton first, and then Obama, and then Hillary. And in all of these circumstances, it's amazing how much we want to wield these things as weapons. Well, our extremism is fine because we pretend that Antifa doesn't exist and we don't report what goes on in, in Portland, but your extremism, my God, that's disgusting. This is the completely ridiculous place that we're in. And by the way, our friends in part, are coked up on tech money and they don't appear to hold the courage of their convictions at a political level because it's not in keeping with shareholder value. You know, at some level, shareholder value is the ultimate shield with, with which everyone can cloak themselves. Well, on that point, Donald Trump was banned from Twitter 
and I'm not sure it was a good financial decision for Twitter, right? Uh, well, I'm, perhaps you can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, well, are you thinking locally, or are you thinking if Twitter refused to, well, if, if Twitter refused to ban Donald Trump, what is the odds that that uh, the full force of the antitrust division might find them? I don't know. Oh, I see. I see. So there's a, a complicated thing. Well, there's a look. These guys are all having a discussion in very practical terms. You know, you can say you can imagine the sorts of conversations. Jack, Mark, Sunder, we're really glad you're all here. We're, we're all trying to sing from the same hymnal and row in the same direction. We understand free speech. We're completely committed to it, but we have to draw a line with extremism, guys. We we just need we need to make sure we're all on the same page. Well, they use the term violence, too, and they, I think, over-apply it. So basically, anybody who... <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, uh, I say dumb things to uh to incentivize uh thoughtful conversation okay. well whatever these things are there is no trace 